Okay, so this is going to be a very candid response video to just about everyone in the wake of my on-the-ground reports from the so-called Unite the Right rally in Virginia this weekend. But before I begin, a word to the hundreds of individuals who reached out expressing concern and gratitude for my reports. I am now very obviously safe and sound, and I truly can't take credit for having done anything extraordinary. I just kept my camera rolling. It breaks my heart that a young woman left her house on Saturday morning and will never return. It's horrific. Her family is quite sincerely in my prayers, and I condemn James Fields' alleged actions in the strongest possible terms. I thank God for having been spared from this carnage. Now, a word to the growing chorus of haters who have called me every slanderous name, threatened to dox those closest to me, and many of whom have wished me dead. You don't define me. So please, allow me to define myself. I do not bathe in tears of white guilt. That doesn't make me a white supremacist. I oppose state multiculturalism and affirmative action. That doesn't make me a racist. I reject cultural Marxism, but that doesn't make me a fascist. I think the false song of social justice has rotted the West from the inside out, but I have never called for violence against any of their adherents. I love my country and I want its borders protected. That doesn't make me alt-right. And for Pete's sakes, I worked for a Jewish boss and I'm a Christian advocate for the one state solution for Israel. I'm not a damn neo-Nazi. When I said that the Charlottesville statement was a thoughtful document, it was not an endorsement. It was my sense that there were grounds upon which to engage in conversation, not physical combat, with the alt-right, something that I made very clear in my interviews, even encouraging the left to make a rebuttal 20-point manifesto. When I said that there is a rising in white racial consciousness, it was because I believe that to be true. It is an observation I have made and one that laid bare on the streets of Charlottesville this weekend. An observation that neither side of the US politics seems to want to admit. The promotion of identity politics combined with the declining white supermajority has led to a new movement. I'm not endorsing it, only pointing out the fact that it exists. This weekend, I intended to report on the facts wherever they led, and there were many that the mainstream media missed in their own reports, too busy condemning the alt-right and accusing me of being one of their ilk. So now, a word to you, the corporate media. What happened in Charlottesville was a stark violation of not only a group's First Amendment rights, but a federal court order. The police failed to uphold the law that day. They failed to keep the opposing groups separate, even when tensions ran red hot and they failed to be present in the moments before the scene became deadly. You see, the car attack was not the only horrific scene that day. There were countless incidents of illegal deployment of mace, guns drawn, sticks and flagpoles used, and from left-wing demonstrators even more often than the right ones. All left violence, it's nothing new. We've seen it at countless protests over the past year. And yet, only one group is protected by you, the media, not to mention the politicians and some police forces too. Left-wing violence at Trump rallies in Chicago, San Jose, Trump's inauguration, Berkeley, y'all just turn a blind eye. You're happy to loop the B-roll of the handful of idiots with swastika flags, but you don't say a damn thing about these scores of Antifa and BLM donning the emblem associated with even more blood of the hammer and sickle. And then you try to tie the whole thing to Trump. Well, newsflash, this isn't Trump's fault. It's the whole damn culture's fault. Decades of identity politics rammed down the throats of our young in their classrooms now permeates our corporate culture. Several months ago, I predicted a civil war was coming to America. Today, it is without hesitation that I can say that civil war has begun. No one in their right mind can look at the images that emerged from Charlottesville this weekend and deny it. From Mace shields and flagpoles to gas masks, Kevlar and firearms, America is experiencing an escalating civil war a la 2017. Sure, neighbor might not be fighting neighbor in the streets without warning, but what we have seen is organized battlegrounds every few weeks where a right-wing group, be they alt-right or alt-light, organizes a rally only to be stormed by the instigating violent alt-left let down by the police and then condemned by politicians. It's a dangerous cycle we have entered, one that many of us in the alternative media have been warning everyone about for months. And I'll be damned if a single person out there wishes to label me a sympathizer of violent behavior. I'm one of the very many trying to put a stop 
to escalating tensions in America's cultural and political civil war. So, sorry guys, just because you label everyone you disagree with a Nazi, doesn't make it the truth. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Faith Goldie.